Hi everybody, uh, this is a short video in order to show you the new Redis data structure called uh, Streams. Uh, so Streams were proposed uh, uh, some time ago by a user called uh, Timothy Downs and basically it was after the introduction of modules that uh, uh, he was saying uh, the module I'm planning on doing is to add a transaction log style data type, meaning that a very large number of sub subscribers can do something like uh, PubSub without a lot of Redis memory growth. Subscribers keeps keeping their position in a message queue rather than having Redis mundane where each consumer is. So basically it's a co concept similar to uh, Apache Kafka that, that popularized the the idea of uh, log and uh, streaming a lot, but still uh, it was not clear how to apply this idea to Redis. What was clear is that we needed such uh, an abstract data type because uh, just a very common problem that uh, Redis users uh, face um, is uh, time series and the uh, data types that Redis has are not a good fit for time series. For example, I could use a list, so I'll push my list ABC. But uh, once one problem is that I want this data to be structured, so okay, I can push something like uh, maybe a JSON or something like that. You know, to say for example, user ID and uh, temperature. I don't know. Um, the but the, the most uh, the biggest problem with lists is that um, the uh, element I push have no offset. They are just indexed inside the list, and accessing inside uh, deeper elements is O and it's linear time. So that's a problem. Also, if I remove elements from one side, the offset will shift because. Uh, the offsets are, are just relative to head and tail, but there is no fixed offset uh, identifying a single element list. Uh, there is no way to get range queries. That's very important to understand, like what was the temperature between uh, these two Unix times and stuff like that. So what I could use instead is sorted sets. So this is a common use case for sorted sets, but it doesn't work very well. For example, I can say uh, add in my Z set as a score. I will use a, like a Unix time. Let's pretend it is a Unix time, and then I add my item temperature. This one. Well, there are several problems with that as well. For example, if I update, if, if I want to add another item. Uh, uh, and the item is the, the exact same string. What I did was to move the old item to a different uh, score because sorted sets are actually not sequence of elements but are a set of ordered elements according to a score and when you modify the score the item moves. So they are not a good fit because you have to like add a pseudo random prefix uh, or something like that so that uh, each item is different and but also they are extremely wasteful from the point of view of memory because they support the, the other interesting features like moving elements around updating the score, ranking operation, uh, all things that you usually don't need in a time series or streaming uh, use case. So basically what really uh, the data structure that was really missing from Redis was a log. But in order for a log to become an abstract data type for Redis, we had to uh, make the log not just like a, a log file, but make a, a concept of log uh, with an API that makes sense in the, in the case of Redis. And also what was needed is to make all this extremely memory efficient. So for the representation using a, a Radix tree with macro nodes composed of list packs that are just uh, 
serialization, uh, it's just this fax serialization format for items in a single allocation was a, a, a very good uh, representation for the sort of sets for uh, uh, streams because it's like you have this log of items one after the other but you actually have indexed the log so that you can access in different parts and because the log is indexed in this way you can in a single allocation put multiple elements so that there are no overheads with pointers and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so let's check the API. Uh, because in the uh, recently, in the latest uh, couple of weeks, I actually have an implementation of the streams inside uh, the streams uh, GitHub branch. If you want to use, uh, just experiment with the examples we are going to, to show. So first, uh, the first command, the, the all the all the streams commands are prefixed with uh, x, x add my stream. Uh, then I should specify the id, the item I'm adding will have. But if I choose to to use the asterisk, it, it means uh, just pick uh, the id automatically. Uh, so auto generate the ID, and then uh, each element inside a stream is uh, represented by uh, field name, field name. So each element inside my log is structured. It's not just a single uh, string like it is in uh, strings. Uh, it's like a, a small associative array basically. So I can say, for example, uh, uh, sensor ID is one temperature this one and of course uh, what, what uh, the command will reply with the ID that was assigned uh, to this uh, item and the ID is composed of a, a millisecond uh, time and a sequence number the millisecond is just the local time uh, inside the Redis server accepting the, the command usually and the sequence number used in order to store uh, more items in the same millisecond and it's a 64 bits number so it can accommodate even the whole stream could have the, the same millisecond however the IDs are guaranteed, are guaranteed to be in, in monolithically incrementing uh, so uh, because the local time of the instance can jump uh, forward backward it's not a reliable source of uh, incrementing uh, counting encounters uh, what happens is that uh, uh, if the local time is greater compared to the timestamp of the latest uh, item inside the, the stream, then it will be used. Otherwise, it will always be used the top element uh, timestamp and just the sequence number will be incremented instead. This way we have the guarantee that uh, we have a keep incrementing uh, again and again. As you can see, uh, Redis streams uh, offsets are logical. They are not really offsets like 1, 2, 3 and so forth. And as you can see, the Redis streams uh, offsets are related with time so that you uh, will be able to, to perform range queries not just uh, in ranges of items but also on range of uh, times. And so, uh, let's see how can I uh, add more items and even if they are the same of course because it's a log so there is no restrictions also note that the fields can change over time we have no, no need to keep the same uh, fields for all the time and at this point we can we can get a range M minus means the uh, lowest item Plus means the highest item possible. So x range my stream minus plus will mean just give me everything. As you can see, we get the ID and the fields, and here the fields are different. It's names and name, and so forth. Um, as we said, basically uh, we are requesting to give us uh, the ID automatically. However. The way the command is uh, rewritten for slaves and uh, AOF 
file is different. Here we can run Redis uh, CLI in slave mode and execute again the command. And as you can see, it is replicated as exad, mainstream, and the actual ID generated. So that all the slaves, of course, will have the same set of IDs. Uh, and the same content exactly. Uh, X range can be used also with uh, IDs. From this ID to this ID, this identifies exactly one item, of course. There is also a count option you can use, or you can use just millisecond timestamp in order to uh, request a given range, for example, for example, from 39 to 41, there is just one item in this millisecond, and so forth. Uh, so basically, you have range queries for free, and all, also you have the ability to uh, get a single item by ID, or, and uh, um, if you want, basically, it, you can use x range just also to pick a single ID, like if it was x get, there is not x get because it will be the same command or maybe it will be an alias in the future, I don't know, but x range can do it for you. Uh, however, the most interesting thing about uh, ready streams is that clients can wait in a blocking way, like blocking list commands, uh, in order for new items to uh, arrive. Uh, so let's open a new um, uh, CLI and xread is the command that is used in order to 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 read uh, to wait for uh, for items. Basically, what I do here is uh, uh, to use xread and I say I want to block if there are no items available. Uh, for zero milliseconds, it means block forever, and I want that you return return me maximum 100 uh, items for every call and then I say streams this uh, are a list of streams I want to block to my stream and I can use multiple keys if I want here yeah I need mean just one and they say for each stream the offset I want to block to uh, that what what I, the offset is basically the ID of the last item I was ab able to receive so that I will receive only items with an ID greater than the one I already uh, got. Uh, so for example, if I use zero here, it will not bl block, it will just give me everything. But if I use a dollar, it means just give me the next items from the moment that I connect, use the top item inside the stream as the last item I conceptually already got, and give me all the future. So if I add a new item here, foo one bar two, and I, I see that xred unblocked the return it to me. So in the next call, call uh, I will use uh, the, the next ID, uh, the, the idea of uh, the next element that uh, I uh, got uh, in the previous call and uh, I will get the, the new items. Uh, as I said, it's possible to block for multiple keys, like key one, key one, key two, and so forth. And then I will specify uh, all the, the items I already have of the corresponding keys, so that it will unblock only if needed. Uh, okay. Then there are the obvious things like xlen, my stream and stuff like that. Uh, one interesting thing is that uh, we will also get client groups. Uh, so it's like Kafka client groups. Basically, a set of clients, instead of receiving everything uh, in fun out, so each client will get all the messages, can say we belong to the same group and we want just uh, that in, in this group we, you don't duplicate the messages, just give uh, first message to me, next message to the next client in the same group, third message to the other client, and so forth. And also there are there is the possibility to say, when I uh, use xred, this is still not implemented, but will be uh, shortly, to say, okay, group, with the group name, and then I say retry in 
like uh, five seconds, these are milliseconds or five thousand. And this means basically the items I get returned, I will have to acknowledge as received. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will send me uh, the same item again. This is basically useful in order to avoid trivial uh, loss of messages, like if uh, if the client uh, crashes and uh, is uh, goes up again and stuff like that. But it doesn't mean that this will give you the same uh, uh, properties, for example, of this queue or other AP message queues uh, or CP message queues, because uh, basically it's just a uh, um, best effort uh, way to resend messages so that uh, no trivial messages are uh, no messages are, uh, is lost in a trivial way, but uh, uh, this property is not preserved across failovers so, or other more other uh, catastrophic events basically. Uh, so well this is a, a very advanced stage of development and uh, design of this data structure and um, basically yes the client groups are missing also uh, I miss uh, a few more features for example the compression the IDs will be compressed inside the, the list pack and also if the items that I continue putting inside the same list pack has the same fields of the first one I will just set a byte to say okay those are the same fields so just the value will follow so those are just optimizations but the memory requirement is already extremely limited compared for example to sorted sets or stuff like that I, I think it's like 20% or less of the memory needed for sorted set. Mm, like uh, I, I, I did a test, 5 million items used to take something like uh, 300 megabytes or something like that. Um, okay, that's all. And so uh, I will uh, keep you informed over Twitter about the progresses with that. Thanks for listening. Bye.